My name is Jacob McKnight, and I'm an associate professor at the Health Systems Collaborative. My area of research, what I'm really interested in, is in helping health systems prepare for extreme weather. So there's a lot of great work underway helping health systems become more sustainable, which means that they are polluting less, that they're changing their energy systems to be more sustainable, that kind of thing. But my real interest is in periods of extreme weather and what health systems do during those periods. So you've got uh, extreme weather like floods or droughts or extreme heat. And during those periods, uh, demand for health services tends to go up. But at the same time, the provision of health services tends to go down because health workers and health systems are also affected by those, those events. So that's my interest. The project I'd like to tell you about is called New Risk, which stands for a novel extreme weather risk insurance system for Kenya. Kenya is a really interesting and powerful example of why we need to help health systems prepare for extreme weather. They are uh, already experiencing very troubling extreme weather. This year they had floods and uh, 300 people were killed, which is of course terrible, but 300,000 people were displaced uh, during the floods. And not only that, the health system really struggled to provide care. Because again, what happened was that these 300,000 people, they have more needs, they have greater health demands due to being displaced. And while that happens, the health facilities were flooded or people couldn't get to work and couldn't op open the health facilities. And even now they're struggling to get back on their feet as a health system and all these new people have much greater needs. So yeah, Kenya is a really good example of why we ought to uh, help health systems prepare for extreme weather and the Neurist project aims to do that. The big questions I think are to do with the, uh, the epidemiological transition and the fact that global health has had this amazing effect over time uh, through things like vaccination and uh, bed nets, uh, the treatment of malaria, TB and HIV. They've saved tens of millions of people around the world but we're now seeing uh, those traditional infectious diseases being, being largely dealt with. And uh, what we're left with are more extreme versions of those conditions, more tricky versions of those infectious diseases, and a huge increase in non-communicable diseases, which means that health services, hospitals and health facilities have much more complex cases to deal with. And unfortunately, in lower and middle income countries, as in higher income countries, in fact, it's a really bad period for health systems because uh, demands are going up, um, demands are more complex, as I was saying, and at the same time, uh, they've not had the economic growth. And so the investments aren't there to help health systems change and deal with these new threats. And then in the background of all that, as, as I'm particularly interested in, you have uh, these exogenous threats. So antimicrobial resistance would be one of those, but uh, extreme weather is also this unknown at this point. We already see it in Kenya and countries like that, uh, but the extent to which it will disrupt services and increase the demand for care are, are unknown. We're really lucky on the New Risk Project that we get to work with populations directly. So uh, one part of the project will explore where the most vulnerable people are and uh, will then see what type of access they've got to health facilities and will explore how best to keep those health facilities open during those periods of extreme weather. But then once we under understand where those people are and what their needs are and how this will change through different types of extreme weather, we want to work with those communities directly to make plans. And if we can help them to plan, if we can help them to really prepare and become resilient, then they've got a much better chance of getting through that period of extreme weather without becoming uh, displaced, without becoming uh, much more affected. And um, we believe that extreme uh, weather risk insurance might be a good idea for that too. I think that climate change represents the largest threat to humanity that's ever existed. So far in health, in the science of, of, of healthcare, in understanding health systems and uh, health demands, we focused on things like malaria <clears throat> and other infectious diseases, how these will change with, uh, with, with heat and um, different types of weather changes. But really, there's a much broader effect across the social determinants of health. So how people uh, are employed, 
how they access education, clean water, food supplies, these types of things. And I think as extreme weather and climate change really affects those social determinants of health, there'll be a much greater increase in the demand for health services. And at the moment, we're, we're simply not prepared. And so um, I think it's uh, essential that we focus on that area.